forget about the lowest common denominator. Here's a fast way to approach adding and subtracting fractions. To add these fractions, we want the sum of the cross products over the product of the denominators. It's wordy to say, but easy to show. 3 times 8 plus 5 times 7 over 7 times 8. That's 24 plus 35 over 56, which equals 59 over 56, which we convert to a mixed number. When subtracting fractions, we want the difference of the cross products over the product of the denominators. Just remember to start in the top left corner. So we'll start with the 5. 5 times 9 minus 6 times 7 over 7 times 9. That equals 45 minus 42 over 63. And that equals 3 over 63, which simplifies to 1 over 21. Multiplying fractions is easy. All you have to do is multiply laterally. 1 times 3 over 2 times 7. That equals 3 over 14. When you multiply laterally, you end up with a fraction whose top and bottom get multiplied by the same number, in this case 2 and they cancel out. You can literally cross-cancel the problem, removing the twos, and you're left with one over three. When dividing fractions, you want cross product divided by cross product. So cross multiply, two times seven divided by five times four. That's 14 over 20, which simplifies to 7 tenths. This approach is essentially the same as flipping the second fraction upside down and multiplying laterally. Just remember, always start with the top left numerator. Note that these numbers all have the same value. You can attach zeros to the left of a number before the decimal point and you can attach zeros to the right after the decimal point, as needed. With that in mind, answer this question. Which is bigger, 0.125 or 0.13? Attach a zero to the end of 0.13. 130 over 1,000 is greater than 125 over 1,000. So 0.13 is greater than 0.125. In adding and subtracting decimals, just remember to line up the decimal points and then just solve the problem normally. When multiplying decimals, look at both numbers in the problem, count how many digits there are total to the right of the decimal. That's how many digits there will be to the right of the decimal in your answer. In this problem, there are three digits to the right of the decimal. The answer will then also have three digits to the right of the decimal. Here's a trick when multiplying by 11. Write the first digit of the other number, three in this case. Add the adjacent neighbors three and two to make five. Add the next adjacent neighbors two and one to make three. And then write the last digit, one. That makes three, five, three, one. There are three digits to the right of the decimal, so our final answer is 3.531. When dividing decimals, move the decimal point of the divisor, if it has one, over to the right, however many places it takes for it to have no decimal value. Move the decimal point of the number being divided the same number of places over to the right. Add placeholder zeros if you need to. 
Directly above that decimal point goes the answer's decimal point. It's important to know how to transform fractions into decimals, and vice versa. To turn a decimal into a fraction, look at how many places are being used by the decimal. For example, 0.25 goes as far right as the hundredths place, so write 25 one hundredths, which can be simplified to one fourth. To decimalize a fraction, simply finish the division problem the fraction represents. 4 divides into 1 0.25 times.